Hey YouTube, welcome to the Killian Family Homestead. Today I'll be giving you a quick update on the aqu aquaculture system or the recirculating, recirculating aquaculture system or RAS system that we have. Made some progress on it, still have a bit to do and I need to clean it up a little bit, but bear with me, let me give you a quick update. Okay, again, forgive the mess, but let's uh, go over what we've done so far and then I'll start it up and show you working. Unfortunately, I bought these uh, backflow valves to, to the water freely flows this way when the pumps are on but when the pumps are off in the sump tank these uh, backflow sump prevention uh, back, prevention of backflow valves here uh, for some reason there's a there's a hole drilled in each one of these there's got to be some reason that I am totally unaware of but it's turned it on and it's shooting water like crazy so I've got to do some sort of fix on that but I'll show you in a second when it's working so I replaced, the, from the previous video, I replaced the, the back um, uh, lines here with three inch instead of one and a half. Obviously with the one and a half, one and a half, one and a half, one and a half coming out, hitting another one and a half is just too much water and we had some uh, flow rate issues here as well as these two, or these four back tanks were actually kind of rising slowly. They weren't actually overflowing but uh, they were way too high. Actually, the water was above the standpipe there. So um, it is making some great progress here. I can't wait to get this garage cleaned up uh, to help my wife get off my case here. But this is what we got going on so far. Sump tank. Two, tank, uh, two one sixth horsepower pumps pump the water up these two individual lines. One inch lines come over here to a one and one quarter uh, uh, inch converter right here. It then goes into the uh, back flow valve that I was talking about. Then, and, and this doesn't split here, that's a secondary line that comes from a completely different pump, but it, it comes right here. This one goes directly in through a one inch uniseal into the very first uh, biomedia filter. This just has a line that comes all the way down and then fills the water up from the bottom up. I'm going to have air stones in there as well as a bunch of biomedia filter stuff to help the bacteria convert the water from ammonia rich into good water. It then fills up and hits a standpipe, flows into this, hits the T-junction. This is a one and a half inch line, then it hits a one inch line and then a, and then a three quarters inch line and shoots water directly into water to disrupt the water, sur uh, water surface as well as to put diffuse oxygen inside of the water. This replicates itself on all eight of these lower tanks. These tanks on the bottom side are the fish tanks. These two are the biomedia filters. You can see here this line is coming from the back side uh, over here all the way to the sump tank. As the water fills up, the only way for the water to escape is through this standpipe here. And the weight of the water around it here pushes down and it hits that standpipe and comes up and then flows out and down to the three inch back line. Now, um, the reason why you have a T here instead of an elbow on this one and a half inch PVC pipe is to uh, forestall or prevent the siphoning effect, which is really important when you're building these sort of systems. This line down here on the bottom is simply a leveling mechanism to make sure that all four of these fish tanks and, uh, and it replicates itself on the back side stay the same level. Um, okay, so it comes down these solids lifting outlet. It's a slow. Comes down here, hits the three inch line. The three inch line comes up over here and hits this tank right here, which is called a, a um, radial flow filter. You see the two standpipes here. Those two three inch standpipes. From the from the weight and force of the water flowing in here, it hits this and then hits a, a 245. So it's a gradual increase and that pushes the water up and bubbles out of the top here. The theory is is that water going in here, the weight of the water, the move, movement of the solids down below these tanks through fish and stuff like that will slowly migrate the solids into it and out and it will bubble out and once it hits the side of this bucket here the solids hit it and get the water redirects and it, and it pushes the solids to the base of this tank and then the clean water comes on the other side and exits through these two one and a half inch lines. And 
Now you might ask yourself, why didn't you just do one three inch line? Mainly because at the time I was building this, I was impatient and didn't have the unisills. I now do, so I might replace that and change that to a three inch backflow. But, you know, effectively I'm doing the same thing with, uh, with two one and a half inch lines. Um, also, if one gets plugged up or something, you still have an escape. Um, down below here I have a viewing window. You'll see the two sump tanks down below and it's just pumping water through here. I can, I can kind of measure and change the amount of water flow to make sure that the flow of water back and out is a net, net zero loss. If that makes sense. In essence, I don't want this tank going down fast, too fast for the water to actually catch back up with it. Um, uh, on the back side here, it's simply replicated, forgive the mess, replicated on that side as well. Now let me get it started and show you. <laughs> forgive, forgive that for a second. That's obviously going to be patched up. But let's let the water fill up and I will show you how it works. Then I will make, yeah, like I said, there's another leak right there. I just do not understand why there's a hole drilled inside of the threaded ends of these things. It's craziness to me. But you know what? I'm a novice in almost everything I do. I'm just experimenting. Good wholesome distractions in building these things and the animals and the farm and stuff like that. Okay, so here's the water. It's already full. It hit the standpipe. It's coming down, hitting the T, going to a three-quarter inch pipe at the end. And as it goes here, you're going to see the force of the water become stronger and stronger. But I think there's enough water disruption that it actually is getting some fine bubbles into the water for the fish to breathe. Okay. Now I must have lost some water in this tank. It's taking a little bit longer to fill this, but here in a second, that'll that'll hit. Let's go along the back side. water coming out there coming out there each one of these tanks is exactly a hundred gallons so I have 800 gallons of fish water then I have a uh, fish tank water then I have another hundred a hundred hundred and a hundred um, so it's working pretty well here obviously without the leak there would be even better So what happens is that water fills up, hits, spills across here, down, and out. When I want to empty it, this is a one inch line here connected to a three quarter inch uh, hose fitting on the bottom there. Just open that up and I uh, drain all the tanks all at once. And then typically out from a hose outside or uh, actually I like to use when the, when the water is ammonia rich, when it's, when it's nutritious, I put it to the garden. You can probably hear a lot of the water. This this is in my garage, and so it's uh, all the water noise is actually not that bad of a deal. If this was outside next to my neighbor's place, I don't think that they would really like to have this noise of falling water like this all the time. And obviously, with the water loss right here. Over time, there will be a decrease in the water retention, but like I said, that'll be fixed. I just wanted to give you guys a quick update. I uh, can't wait to actually put fish in the system. I do need to elevate and push this up a little bit. It's sagging, and when it's when the solids or the slows are sagging a little bit, pushing forward, the arch the arch of this solids lifting outlet is to kind of further up. It needs to be more parallel or perpendicular to this, more uh, even and level so that that standpipe is actually getting enough momentum to bring up the solids. I do hope that I have enough flow right now, since this is now all glued, um, to actually move the solids down and out. I might need to lengthen the, the, the solids lifting outlet standpipe a little bit to make sure it is pulling it out. But good momentum, it's working out pretty well. Well, there you go, YouTube. There's a second update on the aquaculture system that I'm building out. 
Uh, this is, I had somebody email me and ask me about the design. This is my own design. I wrote it up on the kitchen table one evening, and it's probably got a lot of flaws, and it's a brand new or idea. I really have never built anything like this before, so I'm sure I need a lot of suggestions and a lot of help. If you have any, please let me know. Thanks. Take care.